And so uh, I will get started. Uh, and I told Ray Wednesday night that I'm going to do part two of his part one. He started in uh, Second Peter first chapter. I'm going to start in First Peter first chapter. So, and just a little uh, uh, thing to say about this. When my brother passed away two years ago, and before he passed away, he found he had cancer, I was ministering to him and praying with him, and uh, I, I read this, this first chapter of Peter to him, and it's really a lot of good, uh, simple things uh, that the Lord has for us and the Lord wants to share with us. And, it's, and uh, he received it very well. He got some revelation, which I'd never seen my brother have revelation before. You know, he, I knew he knew the Lord and was a Christian, a good Baptist Christian from way back when, but never went to church since way back then. But anyway, <laughs> uh, he ended up praising God and we were worshiping God the, the morning before he passed away. And he, was in, he ended up giving things away and, and just being a loving, giving person the last few months of his life. So... Doesn't matter where you start out or what happens in the middle. It's yeah. how you end up. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, in, let's start off in chapter 2. Uh, it says, elect or chosen, those who are elect or chosen, to the foreknowledge of God, the Father. First Peter 2, 1. 1 Peter 1-2. I'm sorry. And And... The foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification, which is made holy, to, to be obedient uh, to Christ in the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus. Grace to you and peace be multiplied to you. And that spiritual peace, and it's multiplied to you in, in increasing abundance. It's a spiritual peace that it's freedom from fears agitating passions and moral conflicts, and I sure like that. Blessed be the God, of, uh, the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from, from the dead. And the Amplified says, to an ever, we have been born again to an ever-living hope, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away. And the Amplified says, born anew beyond the reach of change and decay, imperishable, unsullied, not spoiled or impure. Uh, you are kept by the power of God through faith. That's being guarded and garrisoned by God through faith. Uh, for salvation ready to be revealed at the last time, or the final salvation. And we're coming up on the final salvation. Praise God. Uh, in this you greatly rejoice. Or in another version, version says, you should be exceedingly glad. For though now, for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Boy, I'm, and uh, I don't want to lose my track, but uh, Susan and I were talking about this earlier. So anyway, uh, you've been grieved by various trials, and that's distressed by various trials. And uh, if we will go to a couple of pages over to chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning fiery trial or ordeal, as the Amplified says. I don't know what the difference between a fiery ordeal and a fiery trial is. I, I, suppose, I suppose an ordeal is like a skirmish and a trial is like a battle. <laughs> so it could be like that. But either way, uh, which, which is to try you as though some strange thing is happening to you. Uh, don't, you know, don't think it's strange. Uh, to test your quality. And, and by the way, uh, a fiery ordeal or trial is a painful, horrific experience. And I've had, had some of those here lately. Uh, when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. 
full of radiant splendor, you may also rejoice with triumph, victory, exultantly. Uh, for you are reproached for the name of Christ. Blessed are you for the spirit of glory and, and God rest upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. And uh, so and then we go back to uh, James. No, you don't either. We go, uh, no, we go back to James. Yes. James chapter 1. Let's go a couple pages back the other way. James chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials of any sort, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. It develops perseverance. Proving of your faith brings out steadfastness. And let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Mature is another word for being perfect, but fully developed with no defects. Uh, and then we go uh, back to 1 Peter, chapter, I mean, verse 7. And it says, That the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold and, and that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to uh, praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And may, it may be found to contribute uh, to the praise and honor and glory and the revelation of Christ. And that's what... 1-7. 1-7. 1 Peter 1-7. And may be found to praise and honor and the glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible, joy unspeakable. It's a glad emotion. It's glorious, triumphant, heavenly joy, gladness, cheerfulness to ex. Uh, exalt, jump for joy, be full of joy. Uh, I like to put all those definitions on joy. I'm just try to be a joyful person. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And uh, the Amplified says the result, the outcome, the consummation of your faith. We're coming up on the consummation of, of the end of the world, and this why this is serious. In verse 17, it says, And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear. And another way of saying that is the true reverence, conduct yourself with true reverence throughout the time of your temporary residence here on earth. And uh, I don't know how many Christians out there in the world preach that we are, or this is a temporary home, uh, but we do. And, uh, and then uh, flip over to the next page, First uh, Peter 1.17. No, sorry, not that. One uh, twenty-three. excuse me. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God and uh, the everlasting, from, from, who, from one who is immortal, the everlasting, ever living word of God, which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as flower of the grass. The grass withers and its flower falls away. But the word of the Lord the divine instruction of the Lord endures forever. And in uh, verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 1, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, all hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. And that deceit is either concealing or misrepresenting the truth. And 
As newborn babies, desire pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Or I like to put it this way, reverse three and two and say, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, as newborn babies desire pure milk of the word that you may grow. And I, too many Christians are not growing. And, and God wants us to grow. He didn't want us to stay in the, in the, the filth of this world. You know, and he wants us to, to come out of the world. And so, uh, I did that. Let's go to uh, Hebrews 5. Just to, I'm kind of setting up a bunch of stuff, and then we'll get back to some uh, revelation here. In Hebrews 5, 9. Hebrews 5, 9. And having been perfected, and they're talking about Jesus. Actually, His compassion, Completed experience. Jesus, after completing his experience and being perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Called by God as high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Or designated, recognized, and saluted. Uh, all of, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he or she is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, mature, that is, those who by reason of use or practice of the word have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Therefore, leaving the discussion of elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection. We're, we're to go on. Uh, Paul said, I press toward the mark. Leaving those things behind. I, I want to go home. I want to lay hold of what Jesus has laid hold for me to have. Yeah. Laid hold of me to have. So, and uh, back, go to Luke 6, 46. Luke 6, 46. And Jesus had just given the uh, Beatitudes in Luke and, and also a, a good lessons of how to live and be merciful and all that stuff. And uh, you, you would be wise to read chapter 6 of Matthew, I mean of Luke, excuse me. But in 46 it says, But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and, do, and not do the things which I say? And that do means practice or act on. Put my words into practice. Whoever comes to me and hears my saying sayings and does them, acknowledges them, acts on them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently against the house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on, on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. And my note in King James says it collapsed. And I'm setting all this up to say that there's a lot of misunderstanding out there in the Christian world, in the church world, uh, and I, I was talking not too long ago with someone who said, well, the Holy Spirit is going to leave. He, he who restrains is restrained until he's taken out, restrains the, the uh, Antichrist from coming out. And they believe that's the Holy Spirit. There's not going to be a Holy Spirit here on earth when, when the Antichrist comes. So wrong. 
I mean, the Holy Spirit never leaves this earth, if you want to know the truth. He never does. Even in the great tribulation, he, he is here. The Holy Spirit is here. God, God is always going to be here and try to reach people and take care of people until his wrath is complete. So, and, and after that verse, now let's go back to James one twenty one. And in James 1.21, it says, Therefore lay aside all filthness, filthiness and overflow of wickedness. And we saw that in 1 Peter uh, chapter 2 also. You know, we, we've got to lay aside all those things that are worthless, that are, that, are, that are sinful, that are hurting our relationship with God. And receive and receive with meekness, which is a humble, gentle, modest spirit, Receive and welcome the Word of God, which it contains the power to save your souls. During, the, during this time up here, there's three and a half years, you're, you're, the Christians are only going to be saved by doing the Word, receiving the Word with meekness and, hum and humility, and not being deceived. Because the very next verse says, but, the, but be doers of the word, and not hearers only. Just like Jesus said in Luke. Deceiving yourselves. Well, how can you deceive yourself just by hearing the word, and not doing it? Well, first of all, you're hearing from different people. You're hearing all kinds of theologies, and philosophies, and doctrines, and dogmas, and you don't know who to believe. You're hearing all this stuff. And most Christians just say, well, you know, my, our church believes in the, in, in the uh, pre-trib pre rapture. Well, it's not what the Word says. But you can't shake them from that because they're very dogmatic about it. And, and they think, well, that's what, what I've been taught, so that's, that's what, what I believe, and I believe that's what's going to happen. And, you know, just like the person who said there's not going to be a Holy Spirit during the, the tribulation. And deceiving yourselves, and I want to say something about that. It, I looked it up, and it says, betraying yourselves into deception by reasoning contrary to the truth. That day will find yourselves, on that day you'll find yourselves miserable and mistaken, sadly deceived, you are only fooling yourself. You built that, that theology or that word on, on earth without a good foundation. There's no foundation. And the devil is going to tear you up and you're going to collapse. And, and when you realize that, hey, I didn't, that's not right. What my pastor told me about the pre-trib is not right. I'm, in, I'm caught in the middle of this. I'm, and there, you're devastated. Uh, you're, you're sadly deceived. Uh, and it's going to be great. It's going to be that, that fall. You're going to collapse. And that's why I'm trying to say this. I'm trying to bring this message forth. Is because God loves you. He cares about you. He wants you to be safe through the trials that are coming on the earth. And He will keep you safe. But you've got to get into the Word and you've got to receive it like a little baby. Uh, uh, so anyway, go to 2 Timothy 2.22. And again, it says, Flee youthful lust, pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But avoid foolish, ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach and, and be patient, not fighting and contending, kindly to everyone willing to suffer wrong, mild-tempered, 
preserving a bond of peace. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition. God wants to keep us humbly. What did it say in Micah 6, 8? But to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. And if you're out into religion and you're, you're thinking things are this way and you're not checking in the Word of God what, what's going on, you, you know, uh, you're, you, yeah, you're, you're not being humble. You're not receiving the Word in humility and being humble enough for God. And, but in humility, correcting those in opposition, if God will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. God wants everyone to know the truth. God's not keeping the truth from you unless you're not humbling yourselves to get the truth. There's only one way to get it, and that's to humble yourselves before God and ask the Holy Spirit and ask God to reveal the Word to you. If there's things you don't understand in the Word, ask the Holy Spirit. And if you don't get an answer that day, ask Him the next day. Stay in the Word. It's seek, 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 and you shall find. Seek is a continuing thing. It's not a one time. Well, I sought the Lord one time and I didn't find out anything and so I just, I forgot it. You know, that's not what seek is about. And that's not what knock is about. You keep knocking. The, the kingdom of heaven suffered violent and the violent take it by force. You have to push your way in. You have to let God know, God, I'm serious about this. And I'm willing to do anything that I need to do to to know more about you, to receive your word, and to walk humbly with you. And you've got to really surrender it all. Uh, Isaiah 55, 1 is, says it so much. Come and, come and buy. Those who have no money, come and buy. Just for the self-surrender that receives the gift. All these things in the word, God wants you to receive. But you have to surrender yourself to receive it. Uh, so you can't walk in pride. God, God turns away from pride. He will ignore you. He only wants you to be humble. Uh, and, and so God wants you to know the truth, and that He may come, that they may come to their senses, and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him, and and henceforth to do God's will. Uh, the King James Bible has to do his will. It looks like doing the will of the devil. But you've escaped the snare, so how can you be still doing his will? Actually, the, the Amplified has it right. Henceforth to do God's will and not the devil's. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Oh, had that, have had that lately unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal despisers of good, without natural human affection, relentless, admitting of no trace, admitting of no trace or appeasement, haters, loose in morals, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And from such people, turn away. That, doesn't it just make you cringe sometimes when you see someone on TV or you see someone and say, well, if, if God were a good God, my God that wouldn't hurt people like that. My, my God loves everybody. You know, They don't know God. They're, they're just speaking out of nonsense. They haven't sought God. They're not humbly walking for God. That, that's actually a prideful thing to think that you know more about what God needs to do than, than God does. So, and yes, and also in, in, in verse 7 it says, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And the Amplified says, forever inquiring and getting information, but never able to arrive in recog in, at a recognition and knowledge of the truth. You can read all the books about the book of Revelation and the tribulation and end times all you want to, but until you get into it yourself, you're just obtaining knowledge and it's not doing any good. So, uh, with that said, let's go to Revelations and find out some of this stuff. Go to Revelation chapter 6.
And in Revelation chapter 6, verse 9, now previous verses is the uh, Jesus opening up the seals and the four horses coming out. And now he'd opened up the fifth seal in, in verse 9. I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain from the word of God, for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest, wait patiently a little while longer, until both the number of the fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. Well, gee, that means there's going to be Christians killed during the tribulation or during three and a half year period here. And then in uh, Revelation 7 verse 9, now the previous verses are talking about the 144,000 Jews that are going to be called away to God. And, and, and I thought that was just amazing. Uh, that, 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 or they're sealed, they're not called away, they're called... But it's just amazing that there's going to be 12,000 from every tribe. Yeah. I mean, isn't God amazing? He, he, he's perfect. Yeah. There's not 11,900 out of this one and 12,000, yeah. <laughs> you know, and 100 out of that one. It's exactly precise. Uh, God, it, it, that's, I was looking at that and I was going, God, you are just amazing. So in verse 9, it says, After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and, and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom. Thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. That's what people here on earth should be praying and saying. Then one of the elders answered saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white, uh, in white robes and where did they come from? And John saying said, said to him, Well, sir, you know. And so he said to me, These are the ones who came out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb this is the great tribulation and you're, you're going to tell me there's no holy spirit in, in in the tribulation these are christians that came out of the tribulations the tribulation so and uh yeah therefore they are before the throne of god and serve him day and night in his temple and he who sits on the throne will dwell among them, and they shall neither hunger any more, nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to the living foundations of waters, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. You know, some of these people are probably going to, I don't know if, you're going to starve to death, but they're going to go through a time where if you don't take the mark of the beast, you can't buy food, you can't do something, you, you can't do anything. So that's why he's saying they shall never hunger anymore. That's what I kind of got out of this, because they, they may not starve to death, but, but they're not going to be eating like we are now, let's put it that way. So, and thank God for the blessings we have and the food that we have. And then in... Revelations 12, oh, everybody's favorite chapter. This is probably the most misunderstood chapter in Revelations, probably in the whole Word, word of God, but it's also the most probably preached. Uh, people want to know about it, and they, and they have different opinions and, and things on, on it. And listen, I'm not repeating things that Steve Jordan says on Friday nights. I got into the Word, and I, I'm looking at these things, and I call him on a few things, and he'll say, Tom, you're getting revelation. That's great, you know. He's not, he's not saying, well, no, Tom, you got to do it. 
Here, here's what it says. Here's what it means. He doesn't tell me that at all. He, he just says, you're on the right track, <laughs> you know. So, you know, you just got to dig. And, and I love this word. I didn't say it earlier, but I love the word of God. Uh, there, there's nothing I would rather have than the word of God. And I thank God that right now, uh, because I don't have to take care of my wife who passed away a couple of months ago, and I didn't mind it, but I'm saying I've got time to get into the Word of God and to let God show me things. And so uh, He's blessing me dur during, this, during this time, and I really thank Him for it. But in uh, chapter 12, it says, verse 1, Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain and gave birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon. You know, those fiery ordeals and fiery trials. They come from the devil. They don't come from God. The fiery dragon having seven heads, ten horns, and seven diadems on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them uh, to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth and devour her child as soon as it was born. Now the church, uh, I mean the, the woman is the church. Now I've, I've seen all kinds of commentaries that it's Mary <laughs> giving birth to Jesus. Well this is not talking about back then, this is talking about the future events. It's, it's not, you know, so it's not Mary. And I mean, there's just so much foolishness because they don't take the time to receive it humbly. Or they, they don't have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. You know, you've got to ask God for ears to hear first. Ask for the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. But if you're just looking at uh, things through doctrines and dogmas that other religions have written down for you, you'll never, you'll never get it. But anyway, she bore a male child. And that's a manifested son, a man-child, so to speak, and uh, who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God in his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared for her. She's kept safe. That they should feed her there. And now who is they? Now wait a minute, you know, we're, we're talking about a woman going in child, a man child, but then there's a they there. Well, the they is the manifested sons. We go back to Revelations, I mean, uh, Romans 8, 19, and let's do that. Romans 8, 19, for the earnest expectation of creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. That's the male, man child in Revelation. For creation was subject to futility, not willing, not because of him who subjected it uh, in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. That's the male child, the manifested sons. Uh, I'm just connecting dots here. Uh, for we know the whole of creation, uh, and, and there's a thing that says irrational creatures, because all creatures are irrational. They're not supposed to be eating and killing one another, and that's why, and that's why when, when we get into the millennial kingdom, the lion's going to lay down with a lamb, and the lion will eat straw. And uh, I heard a guy say, well, and I can't wait to that. I, I, would just, I can't wait to like, go up and give a big old lion a hug. <laughs> You know, uh, this this earth, this world was not made the way it is. Uh, God made it a Garden of Eden. It made it made everything. Everybody, yeah. So anyway, uh, even we ourselves groan within, eagerly awaiting for the adoption and redemption of our body. So, you know, the sons of God are going to free creation. They're going to feed the church in the wilderness. So yeah, it says they're caught up to God, but they must come back down because they're going to feed them. So that's why we have this that says, uh, 
uh, the man child's caught up, but then the man child returns to feed God's flock. And uh, I didn't just memorize this, I, I'm, I just got it out of the Word of God. It, it is revelation. And a war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. So God's not deceiving you. God's not leading you astray. God won't, God's got a path of righteousness that he wants you to follow. There's a highway of holiness. Yeah. Isaiah 34. Anyway, he was cast into earth, and his angels were cast down with him. Then I heard a voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and, and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before God day and night has been cast down. The devil's been up there for however many thousands of years since the beginning of time, since he fell. He's been, he's been coming up there to God and, and blaming everything on his people. He don't like the human beings. He never did like human beings. Uh, you know, so he's been going up there and accusing each and every one of us by name. He'll go up there and accuse. Well, David's not, you know, he, he, why are you blessing him? He's not doing what he's supposed to do. He's doing this, and you, he's not supposed to be doing that. You know, that, that's what he does. Whether he's doing it or not, he may be doing the right thing, but the devil's just trying to... Recap. Yeah, he, he's just trying to wreak havoc. That's it. Thank you very much, Patrice. And, uh, but I, I think it's neat now. He, he, think he can't go before God anymore. He cannot... He cannot accuse us about anything. So what's happened? So I believe he's really upset. I mean, he is really on a, ter a torrent. He, he's, he's mad. And so what happens? Uh, uh, he, he goes out and tries to kill everybody. But let me go back to verse 11. And they overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. That's how you do it, folks. But you're going to have to know... Uh, the Lamb, which is Jesus, and you're going to have to be drenched, be uh, cleansed by His blood, and and the Word. You're going to have to know the Word for for you to be able to give testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. So there's some people that are going to die, but it's all good. We still win. <laughs> yeah. And so therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that his time is short. And now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman. And that's the church. So he's persecuting the church who gave birth to the male child, to the Mature Christians, the overcomers, the, the manifested sons that are freeing creation, that are feeding the church. And, and, he's, and, and he's mad. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. And that can't be Mary, can it? <laughs> no, it's the church was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nursed for a time, times and a half time, from the presence of the serpent. And as we see, the, the three and a half years up here. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. Now, I, I'm just going to interject an opinion here. Uh, I don't know what this is exactly. I don't, really don't know. I'll, I'll, Lord, show me sometime. But, you know, we're flooded right now with all kinds of useless information and many different opinions and ideas from all types of people and, and cultures. We are flooded. And, and back in the 50s and 60s when I was raised and Ray and all you guys were raised, man, we were starved for, for uh, some kind of knowledge or some kind of news going on or, 
you know, anything like that. And now it's just the opposite. There's so much that people, just like Eddie, you know, they're into these things. There's so many things that can give you vain amusements, that can turn you away from God. And I don't know if that's going to happen during this time, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an opinion. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went out to make war with the rest of the offspring, her offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have a testimony of Jesus Christ. And there's just more proof that the Holy Spirit is during this time is here because there's still there's still Christians that the that the devil doesn't like and he's out to get. And now we go to the next chapter, uh, verse seven, thirteen, verse seven, and it was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life. 8, 13, 8. Book of life of the, la- of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. If anyone is able to hear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. And listen, if, if, you're, if you're overbearing toward somebody and, and you're, you're, uh, you're, you're just you, in your, to your wife or your spouse, whatever the, the situation may be, and you're just lording over them, that's, that's being captive. And you know what? It says you're going to be held to go into captivity. And he who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. To me, this is all the, the people of the world, and a lot of Christians, have weapons. They have guns. They're going to go in the wilderness. And if somebody's stealing something from them, they're going to shoot them and kill them. Well, guess what? If you use the gun to kill somebody, you're, somebody's going to use the gun to kill you. He said, here is the patience of, and faith of the saints. I read that here is the patience of the saints and that made me understand what it said before that. Because patience of the state, that's the call for the patience and the faithfulness and to demonstrate loyalty to Jesus. That's what it's all about. That's that patience. When it's all going on around you, somebody wants to walk up and try to try to shoot you. Well, remember, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Okay? But at the same time, you're going to demonstrate love and loyalty of Jesus. And, uh, and you know, God's going to take care of that situation. So, and, we, and now we go to uh, 14, chapter 14. See, I kept it in order. Uh, verse 9. Well, let's just read the whole thing. Do I have time? I'm sure I do. Then I looked, uh, 14.1, Then I looked, and behold, a lamb standing on the Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 having his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven like the voice of many waters and like the voice of a loud thunder. And I heard the sound of harpists playing their harps. They sang as it were a new song before the throne, before the living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. I want to be one of the 144,000 just to know what that song is. <laughs> yeah. Praise God, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a, a, a number one hit for centuries to come. <laughs> yeah. These are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. Virgin representing a Christian. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. These were redeemed from among men, being first fruits to God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no deceit, for they are without fault before the throne of God. There was no deceit in their mouth. They had the Word of God pure and true in their heart and their inner being. There was no deception. There was no religious doctrines, dogmas, or creed. There was nothing that was not the truth. There was no falsehood. Uh, and so I'm saying that to tell everybody 
God, God's word is true. Let every man be a liar, but let God's word be true. It is the truth. And some people say, well, it's got some truth in it. No, it is the truth. It's the whole truth. It's nothing but the truth. And that's what you need to be able to get into the kingdom of God, to tell you the truth. And, and I, then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give Him glory. And that fear God is revere God, give Him glory, honor, and praise in worship. And worship Him who made heaven and earth and the sea of, of, before the hour of His judgment has come. And worship Him who made heaven, earth, and sea. And springs of water. Springs of water to me are a source or a supply. He's our, he is our source. He, he supplies all of our needs. Praise God. Another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen. Babylon is the world order, in case you didn't know. Babylon is fallen. Is fallen, that great city, because she made all the nations drink of the wine of her wrath, of her fornication. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, no worship, uh, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark on, on his name. I've got, a, I've got a sermon about there is a hell. I've got a sermon about where do you go when you leave this earth. And I want to tell you, I found all the scriptures about hell and torment. Mm -hmm. There is a place, and you don't want to go there. Yeah, that's right. and, and, if you, and if you die and go to hell, well, that's just the, the first part of your torment. The second part's going to be after the thousand years when you're put into the lake of fire and brimstone. Forever and ever. This is not a game we're playing here. Exactly. This is not, hey, we're, we're this kind of uh, people. We believe this way and other people believe that way. We're this kind of way. We're, we're, we're hanging on to the truth. And we know the truth. And we feel for everybody out there, uh, especially for Christians who just have a lot of misinformation. And uh, I encourage you to get into the Word. I hope you're writing down these scriptures and, and checking it out for yourself, asking God to show you. Uh, so anyway, here is the patience of the state saints, verse 12. The steadfastness, endurance, continuing loyalty and support for the cause and their belief. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep commandments of God and the faith in Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. And so there's, there's more people dying during, during this time. So just more ammunition to back that up. And... Uh, now, I want to take you to Matthew 18. I'm getting close to the end. Matthew 18. Verse 3. Matthew 18, 3. Jesus said, Assuredly, I say to you, Unless you repent or be converted or, and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Now what does that mean? Unless you repent and become like a little child, like little children. Children, they're just trusting, they're lowly, they're loving, they're forgiving. Unless you come to God like that, you know, you're not going to even see the kingdom of heaven. 
Therefore, whoever humbles himself, there's that humble again, as a little child, uh, as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. That's, you're the greatest in the kingdom of heaven if you just receive everything God has for you like a little trial, child. I just trust you, Lord. You're going to take care of my next meal. You're going to put the clothes in my bag. You're, you're going to lead me where I need to go. And, and, uh, and we're going to have a good time doing it. You know, uh, back in Matthew eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus was answering them and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent. And that means learned, learned, and clever. Listen, if you think you're smarter than God, you think you know it all, you, 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 uh, you know, you've got all these PhDs, and, yeah. and uh, man, you're just smarter than everybody else, and every argument you get into, you win, because you know more than everybody else. I'm going to tell you right now, nothing of God will be revealed to you. You're not going to receive any revelation from God. Uh, uh, Because he says, Lord in heaven, I thank you that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to the babies, the little children, the untaught, the unskilled, just like we were talking about in Matthew 18, 3. Uh, And so, uh, I'm, I'm going to finish with this. Colossians 3, Colossians 3, verse 10. Colossians 3.10, And have put, you have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. And the Amplified is like you, you're a new spiritual self which is ever in the process of being renewed and remolded into fuller and more perfect knowledge upon knowledge. You will obtain not knowledge. You, you've got to know Christ. You've got to know God. You've got to know His character. Know who He is. But you only get that by being a little child, looking up and saying, Daddy, tell me about yourself. You know, you, it, it sounds silly and it sounds silly. I'm a 70-year-old man, but thank God I can still be a little kid in God's eyes. And, and, and that's, that's precious to me. And... And the verse 12 says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, and meekness, long-suffering. Uh, you know, and, and I could go on and on. It talks about loving one another and all that. But really, the bottom line is, I'm trying to communicate to everyone out there that God loves you. He's not, he's not running, playing some game with like a chess board saying this person's going to die and I'm going to do this. That. He's not doing that. He's not willing that any should perish. He wants everyone to be saved. But there's only one way, and that's His way. There are many, many roads, and wide are the roads that lead to destruction. And that house that collapsed was not built on a foundation, not built on the rock. Come to God. Come to God and ask God to show you things. Ask Him to prepare you for what's coming up. Because, folks, it's coming up soon. I know people say, well, we, it's, life has been going on for 2,000 years since Jesus and nothing's happened. But all the prophecies and all this book that is true has been coming true. Jesus said you won't know the hour or the day, but He said you can know the season. And we're in the season. This is the season of the last days and it's fixing to hit. And it's going to hit hard. And all those who aren't prepared, your house, your inner being, your inner spirit is going to collapse. You're going to be saddened. You're, you're going to be, you're just going to be devastated. And if that happens, God still loves you. 
Turn to God. And so I just encourage everyone to keep God first and foremost in everything you do, and He'll see you through it. He'll do it. We just have to keep coming to the Word and understand it, but He's going to get us there. So, Father, I thank You for the Word tonight, and I thank You that uh, You'll take this Word and reach some people with it and uh, get, get some revelation knowledge and get some people to be uh, humbling themselves to receive more from You and to uh, just become to know You. Because 